to EMI STV and I'm very honored to have here Professor George Kiriakidis. He's the EMRS president, so welcome and thanks for being uh, with us today. Thank you for the invitation. <laughs> um, so first, as the president of the um, MR EMRS, um, so it's the, like the European counterpart of MRS. And um, what are some of the highlights from this year's conference? Well, as you know, uh, the European MRS is one of the largest uh, MRS societies in, globally. Uh, we represent Europe uh, as a general. Um, and the highlight uh, of, of what we're doing uh, during our two events per year, which is the spring, this one, and the, the fall one, uh, collected more than 4,000 participants and, and, and scientists and fellow uh, w workers from all over the globe. The highlight is the participation of, of uh, global materials research societies. So in this event, we managed to uh, uh, attract colleagues from uh, North America, mm -hmm. from South America, uh, from Africa, from Asia, uh, and, uh, and from Australia. And uh, we are pleased that uh, we organized this event in collaboration with the Interna International Union of MRS, which is our umbrella organization, um, which uh, is represented here by its president, the current president. Uh, it's uh, Professor Han from China. Uh, the immediate uh, uh, past president, uh, Professor Lee from Korea, uh, the first uh, uh, vice president, which will be the, the next uh, president of IUMRS, uh, Professor Rodrigo Martins from Portugal, and he was also our, our own uh, past uh, um, EMRS president, and the second vice president and so forth. And we have all the adhering bodies, I think uh, 12 of them, of the International Union here, including the American MRS representatives, uh, which I, I believe you already interviewed, uh, which are actually here as observers mm -hmm. to the International Union, contributing to not only what's going on globally, but to a bilateral uh, collaboration we are strengthening between our American colleagues and, and ourselves. And we had a, a meeting with different subjects uh, on which we're collaborating. One of them is the presentation uh, this afternoon by the uh, MRS uh, Mid-Career Award winner in Boston, which is actually an invited speaker here uh, this afternoon after the plenary session of one of our uh, Nobel laureates. And talking about the Nobel laureates, I will have to say that Professor Amano uh, gave a plenary talk on Monday, which was very well received. And also we have the um, the second one uh, today by uh, Professor von Klissen uh, uh, that will conclude this top level uh, uh, talks that actually entreat the interest of the, the students and the fellow scientists. Let me say also that we have today the uh, so-called uh, IUMRS Global Award Ceremony, which is actually in distinction to uh, um, globally uh, appreciated and, and, and leaders, global leaders, uh, uh, who actually made a lot of uh, contribution not to the scientific part of the community but to the societal part of the community. How we get the the uh, message to the society, how we get the message to, uh, to uh, the public and so forth. And um, uh, we are glad uh, that uh, this year we are honoring uh, um, a commissioner for research uh, from, uh, uh, from Brussels, uh, Commissioner Carlos uh, Moedas, who unfortunately is not going to be with us here. Um, the um, address will be given by Robert, uh, with, uh, uh, will be uh, given uh, uh, by uh, the introduction by Peter Droll, who is going to talk uh, about the contribution of research and innovation on a European level. And also the second uh, uh, recipient is uh, Professor um, Bob Chang from uh, Northwestern University, uh, honoring him as the founding president of the IUMRS and the uh, mastermind behind having this global organization. So seeing all those top level speakers, so for you personally, what role does material science have also for the society today? Well, we are putting a lot of emphasis on 
motivating the young generation uh, uh, because this is where the future is. Uh, we are motivating people through awards, uh, through, uh, uh, let's say, uh, diplomas, and we're motivating people uh, by actually giving them a floor of an international uh, scientific environment of very high level so that they can actually attend top class talks by people uh, whom they will otherwise have a difficulty to approach or have access to. And then uh, we want to encourage all these people to push the, pass the message to their uh, communities and to their universities and to their institutes so that they can motivate the younger generation to uh, become members of this community, this, uh, this, uh, this family, as I call, of bacterial science. Yes, perfect. And, um, when we look at Europe today, also we just had the European elections and in many countries climate change has, is now on top of the people's agenda. Also for the young generation, like Greta Thunberg has a huge impact on the young generation. So how does material sciences fit into this? Oh, in, in all sorts of aspects, uh, from, from, from making a device itself uh, to making a system that can measure, let's say, changes in the, in the climate, to putting materials in space, in, in the uh, uh, satellites. Uh, so materials is the fundamental uh, uh, concept on anything we experience today and we call it technology. So, any aspect of the technology, the bottom line has a material, whether it's silicon or gallium arsenide or uh, a polymeric material or a, a perovskite or whatever, it doesn't really matter. We have to start from the grounding uh, part of it, which is the, uh, the material. And then we're bu building uh, uh, devices and then we're building systems and then we go to the applications. So as far as environment is concerned, to come back to your question, I think the cornerstone of our fight for a greener environment and uh, for a better environment for the future are materials. I'll take a, a, an example, for instance, here, coming from my own part of, of uh, research. We are working on materials for photocatalysis. Photocatalytic materials are materials which actually use light, either daylight or artificial light, to decompose and clean air. This is of huge importance for our well-being. We spend more than 90% of, of our time indoors. So if the indoor environment can be cleaned by a process which is creating no uh, waste and doesn't cost us anything, then it will be a huge opportunity for the society. So materials is everywhere. That's a nice ending. Thanks so much for being here Thank with us today. Thank you for the invitation. You. <laughs>